I am Bill Say, and in this video, I want to talk about ghost roles, uh, describe to you what they are, and how we can work with them in all kinds of settings. Really interesting thing. So, first of all, a ghost role is a role that's referred to or implied, but not directly represented in the situation. So let's say you're sitting there with um, your partner at home, and you're talking about, um, let's say, a critical kind of... Uh, uh, person or something like that, and let's say you're talking about it for a while, and yet neither one of you are saying, yeah, I'm, I'm actually a, that critic, and maybe uh, you're feeling the impact of that, and my apologies, or not, right? Or, for example, let's say you're in a community setting, and people are grumbling about um, just a, about a, a dictator in, in that's, uh, that's part of the community, but that person's not really there at the meeting. Until someone actively starts to represent um, that part, um, it's considered, in, at least in process work theory, a ghost role. So the interesting thing about ghost roles is that, uh, like ghosts, they can haunt people, they can disturb people, and have quite an influence. So in my work lately with couples, but also with individuals, and inside myself, um, and in my relationship with my wife Linda, I've been thinking a lot and actually working with um, the, the, this kind of role. So. Um, first of all, a ghost role can be seen in different ways. It can be seen as something that we're projecting onto the other person. We're talking about, for example, in a, in a relationship of some kind, let's say a critic, and I could just be projecting my own criticism onto you and thinking you're the one who's been critical. Sure, that can absolutely happen. But then there's other kinds of ways how the ghost may appear. Uh, for example, in organizational settings, Maybe you had a founder, uh, someone who, uh, who created the organization, was around in the organization for many years, died, and then people in the organization still feel in some way that that founder is still present, somehow kind of still saying what the organization is doing right or wrong and implying what the best direction is. It's a really kind of common phenomena. So it's, in a way, it's a non-local phenomena. And in that way, it defies um, the limits of uh, Newtonian thinking, but is more in line with um, uh, the modern quantum physics that suggests uh, non-locality, that things that seem to be unrelated, disconnected, may in fact be connected and have an influence. So I noticed, for example, in um, my relationship with Linda, Somehow the, 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 the factor or the, uh, the role of, the, of the, uh, the ghost role of ageism has been creeping into our beliefs, a little bit in our thinking, and possibly in our interactions. So I've been noticing, hmm, Linda, I think, I think the ghost role of uh, ageism is coming into, our, um, in, coming into our life, into our relationship. And we haven't yet worked on it, but I noticed that I worked on uh, the, uh, the ghost role, the ageist inside myself, because I noticed some uh, lately some more pronounced self-criticism that implies that I'm washed up. I'm too old. I should just pack it up and retire, <laughs> something like that. And I noticed that when I work on it, um, it's a little bit hard to have a response. At first, I'm like, I barely know how to respond to, to this uh, ageist voice that, that, that puts me down and says I'm too old. But then once I started to, I noticed that some vague mood that had been coming over me uh, started to lift. And I felt like, hmm, maybe I'm not washed up after all. Or another example, uh, let's say you have a couple of people, uh, you're in a relationship with somebody, and there's a ghost role of a critic that's somehow implied or referred to in your relationship. And uh, no, neither one of you is, is, is saying, yeah, I'm being critical of you. I'm sorry or I'm not sorry because here's, the, here's why I'm critical. Yeah, uh, You might find that um, the issue continues because um, neither party can yet own, pick up the ghost role of the critic. And so one idea, one practice that's not for everyone but sometimes it can make an incredible difference. It's to say, listen, there's almost like there's this ghost in a relationship. There's almost like this part, this critic, and seems like it's in our relationship somehow. What happens if one of us, one at a time, we somehow give a little bit of voice to the critic? 
So, for example, you know, your, your, your partner that you're in relationship with says, okay, I don't know, it seems like a strange idea, but sure, why not? And then uh, the, the critic in you might say, well, I, if I was going to be the critic, I would say, you're not really working hard enough or you're not doing things the right way. And then that would give your partner a chance to respond to the critic who said, well, you know, actually, there's a little truth to what you're saying. I'm not working so hard because I have a different idea of what we should be doing with our time. Or, hmm, you think I'm not going the right way? Well, I don't, I don't really um, agree with your way either. And this, I've been, I've been a little bit shy to say that. So it may open an opportunity for a whole level of discussion that you, the two of you may have been avoiding. Right? I also noticed that connected to the different isms, like ageism, racism, sexism, etc., that um, those ghosts or the ghosts that are um, associated with those isms, um, sometimes they come right out in the open and they, they say it. They say, I don't like you because you're too old or you're a woman or you're gay or you're this kind of race or that kind of religion. Sometimes those, those, uh, those voices come out directly, and I'll, in another video I'll talk about how you can work with those. But in some settings, the ghost of those isms is present, but no one is directly claiming them. And so, for example, in family work, in, um, in uh, intimate relationship work, I will often invite those ghosts to come out directly. Yeah? So, if you have a couple, if you, or if you're in a couple where there's maybe something going on around race or around um, age or sexual orientation or religion, you might consider bringing out that ghost and give it a bit of a voice. It's like, oh, I'm a little bit shy to say it, but yeah, the sexist voice in me says that because you're a man or a woman, etc., I think less of you, I, th I think I'm better than you. Mm. And then it can give your partner a chance to respond to that, um, to that ghost. And then you could then um, switch roles with your partner. And then you could see what it's like when your partner picks up that ghost and says things to you from that ism kind of way of thinking that says, you're too this or you're too that, and that this is why I'm against you. It's, a, it's not necessarily a comfortable thing to do, but you may also find in families, teams, et cetera, et cetera, communities, that these, um, these issues can um, persist. And sometimes if no one picks it up, no one owns it, because people may think, oh, that's not me, that's, I'm not that kind of person, that the issue may persist. And so picking up that ghost, uh, expressing it, giving people an opportunity to interact with it, even in some kind of playful way, can have an impact. I'm thinking about organizational work where I've gone into organizations, we're in a large group setting, and, and people are afraid to speak. And sometimes I say, it's almost like there's a ghost here saying something like, um, wow, you better not say anything unless it's really, really smart. Or you, you, you better not say something because it's going to be the wrong thing. And I say, is it, is it something like this? And people will start to laugh or they'll say, yeah, it's almost like there's something like that in the room. And so the, the group may be very inhibited around communication. And if it's an organization, they're trying to carry out some kind of mission, that can really affect the flow of ideas and communication. Yeah, It's a very common thing for an organizational culture to get maybe somewhat critical, perfectionistic, um, get really focused on competency, etc. And so these ghosts could come out. So I even did it for a moment with a group. I'm thinking about a group I worked with a little bit ago. And I said, yeah, you better uh, not say anything unless it's a really smart thing. So you should just shut up. And then so I said to the group, and they, they were kind of, people were like nodding their heads and they were laughing a little bit. So I could tell I was on the right, um, I'm on the right track. And I said, what would you say to that critic? And there was a little hesitation that one woman said, well, she said, well, how are we supposed to learn if, um, if I have to, you know, uphold that kind of a standard? I just feel like I'm not going to say anything then. And somehow that broke things open a bit, and then the group started to speak more. So a, a ghost role interaction can happen even um, in a somewhat lighthearted fashion, and you might find it can still have an impact. Yeah? It doesn't have to be 
the, the, the most difficult interaction, but somehow giving a little bit of voice to the ghost role, uh, letting other people respond to that ghost role, um, it can have an amazing effect. So play with it in your, in your, in your relationship, uh, in your family, in your team, uh, community group. You might have a lot of fun with it, and you may notice it actually brings things more to awareness and could shift the actual dynamics at hand. All right, okay, take care, have fun with it. If you have any questions or comments, yeah, if something happens that you, you found was kind of amazing or terrible, put it in the comment box, and uh, it'll be fun to, uh, to chat about it. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.